What happened to our screen set? It went black and then it's back on now. Hey, uh, can you hear me, Mike? Mike, you don't see her on? Okay. She might be in a conference room. Good morning, everyone. I would like to call to order the virtual Pasco County Board of County Commission meeting of May 19th, 2020. And I would like to remind everybody to please mute your microphones unless you are speaking and also your electronic devices if you can mute those too. Um, please rise for the invocation and the pledge at this time. Oh, merciful creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us thankful for your loving providence and grant that we remember. Uh, clerk, invocation, please. Sorry. Okay, sorry, we were muted. Oh, merciful creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> it was going to wear shorts, but you know. Please call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Thank Commissioner you. Mariano. Madam Clerk, your microphone is muted once again. No, it's red. You can start the roll call over again, please, and somebody can check the microphone. It's it's red. It's on. Yeah, and I hear it in the system. Can you hear me now? We hear you over the speaker, sir. Right. He's not here. Can you hear me, Commissioner? Can you hear us? Can Testing. Somebody please check the microphones because I'm not hearing a thing. You hear me? Try now. Can you hear us now, sir? I can hear you, but I cannot hear the clerk. Can you hear me now? I can. Yes. Okay, great. It looks like the microphone was fixed. <laughs> okay, right. great. We can start over. With yes, sir. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Here. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. <coughs> I am here. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Here. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Here. District 2, Chairman Moore. Here. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Schneidsteiner, will you please go over today's proceeding with the Board of County Commissioners? Be happy to, Mr. Chairman. On March 20th, 2020, Governor DeSantis issued uh, Executive Order 2069, which has been extended by Executive Order 2114, which suspended any Florida statute that requires a quorum to be present in person or requires a local government to meet in a specific public place. The order allowed the board to meet virtually utilizing communications media technology. 
The detailed, a detailed advertisement was run in the Tampa Bay Times indicating the board's intent to conduct a virtual meeting. Even with Executive Order 2112, the governor's safe, smart, step-by-step -step order, large gatherings of over 10 people are not permitted to congregate in any public space that does not readily allow for appropriate social distancing. Based on this, con based on this the conduct of a regular meeting would certainly not meet the spirit or intent of the order. The process has been established the process has been established by the use of technology in a, in, to proceed in a manner that in, that in such a, in, so that the meeting is as in person as possible. Um, the public has been afforded an opportunity to make public comments either in writing or by use of communications technology that has, that has been provided. Uh, the, the board adopted resolution 2118 on April 21st, 2020, establishing the procedural rule for virtual meetings, such as the one being held today. As with any meeting that you take action, you are required to take public comment on any proposition pursuant to section uh, 286.0114 Florida statutes. I'm available for any questions. Mr. Chairman. Oh, there we go. Now is the time for public comment. Citizens are given an opportunity to comment on any item coming before the board during this public comment section. The board also takes public comment on items be placed on a future board agenda on a, or other business under their purview. Due to the operations and to safeguard the well-being and safety of all our citizens and staff, today's public comment will be handled differently. First, we will take public comment from callers that have pre-registered are currently on queue. After we read into the public record, comments, documents, PowerPoints, or videos that have been identified by members of the public to be read out loud or played at the meeting, not to exceed three minutes for each. This new format does not waive the request that when you address the board, comments are not directed personally against a commissioner or team member, but rather directed at the issues. This provides mutual respect between the board members and the public. For those participants calling in, after stating your name and address for the clerk, the timer will be activated and we'll start a countdown. After two minutes, one beep will sound, letting you know that only one minute remains. After the time is up, two beeps will sound, indicating the three minutes are up. Please note that calls will be disconnected after the three minute mark. Madam Clerk, I know we have three minutes to speak, so if we could go ahead and um, start with that. Great, can you hear me? I can, thank you. Great. So we had four people pre-register. Three of the four um, have called in. We will start with Mr. Santos Roman. Mr. Santos, please state your name and address for the record and start your comment. Uh, Santos Roman, 27810, Treasure Right Loop, Western Chapel, Florida, 33544. Go ahead and start your comments, sir. Um, I'm not sure what I need to be saying. I know I signed up. Uh, this is for the Board of Common Commissioners, correct? Yes, sir. Um, this is so you can comment on any item pertaining to the agenda. Uh, this is my first time calling. I'm not sure the procedure is. That's quite all right. You can just share any comments that you have with the board at this time. Um, I don't have none in mind right now. Okay, sir. Well, thank you for calling. We appreciate that. Have a great day. That would be it. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. The next caller signed up is Mr. Daryl Whitlock. Mr. Whitlock, if you could please state your name yes, and address for the record and start your comment. Yes, my name is Daryl Whitlock. I live at 13515 Veronica Drive in Hudson. Okay, go ahead. I'd like to address the, the board members today about an issue about the new boat lift covers that's being installed up and down our coast and all around Florida right now. Last week, I happened to talk to two, actually three building inspectors that was coming out inspecting my neighbor's lift. And the first thing came out of their mouth was that he had an illegal cover on his boat. It was the same aluminum cover 
that I actually had to deposit a thousand dollars down from the same company to put on my list. And they says it's illegal. It's got to be removed. And I talked to him uh, for an extensive amount of time about this issue. And he said, being it's bolted on, it alters the structure of the boat list. And I told him that my deposit was non-refundable. And why are they allowing people to do this out there? And they see it day after day with these the boat lift covers that's out there. And there's probably 50 and 100 right in my neighborhood or right, right around us. And he said that the Pasco County attorney has been telling them that they are illegal. Again, I asked them, I said, how can we do this? I said, how about if we altered it and made a clamping system for it? And they did tell me that that would probably bring it in a gray area, that it did probably allow them to do it. But he didn't know what the, the attorney would be saying about this. But I thought this should be brought to the attention of the board members uh, to know what's going on here. I mean, really, them building inspectors, to me, are there to help protect us as the uh, as neighbors and uh, as homeowners and if this is illegal what's being done why ain't they stopping them from doing this and tell them the right way to do it or tell them not to do it because i know all the way up and down the coast these are being installed in different counties um sir for your comment other than that that's about all i want to really put out there with it uh i did I did talk to him about that, and I guess that he did say that with that all, mine's going to be altered this weekend, actually this week. Uh, later this week, this will be installing it. I did contact the company, which is Waterway Boat Lift Covers. I think they're out of uh, Punta Gorda, and they're making it where they could clamp it onto my lift. And I'm hoping that this does not uh, create a big problem for me, because right now the way things have been going with this corona, the, the coronavirus thing, a lot of people have been working. So a lot of us have put out anywhere from four to five, six, seven thousand dollars on these lists for no reason. If the county comes in and tells them we, they're, that they're illegal, that's a lot of money to come out of our pocket for nothing. All right. Thank you, Mr. Woodlock. The last person who is on the phone um, is Miss Julia Gartenick. And just to let you know, uh, Chairman, we also have a public comment via email that they asked to be read into the record. Uh, time out real quick. You can have either public comment. It's, it's a separate person. Oh, so, okay, gotcha, gotcha, okay, thank you. Go ahead. Ms. Bartonek, if you could please state your name and address for the record and start your comment. Ms. Bartonek? Hello? Ms. Bartonek? Ms. Bartonek? Ms. Bartonek? Yes, hi. Yes, ma'am. If you could please state your name and address for the record and start your comment. Yes, my name is Julia Barchinick and my address is 2645 Meadowood Drive, New Provinci, Florida, 34655. Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead and start, and start your comment. Hello? Okay, yes. My comment is that I am calling to speak in opposition against GA20-2. Yes. 0068 and I am calling firstly to oppose this uh, I'm calling in opposition to this three million dollars to be spent spent on the extension of the Sun Lake Road and this is for several reasons uh, first and foremost we are in the midst of a pandemic and we are entering into hurricane season and for such a large allotment of money come out of the Pasco County taxpayers coffers is reprehensible and irresponsible at this time if we are going to build a road which I am against for environmental reasons we need to let the corporate stakeholders 
pay because they are the ones that are predominantly going to profit over uh, Sun Lake Road extension up to State Road 52. So I'm speaking in opposition of the A20-0068 and the allocation of $3,450,000 of taxpayers' monies that will build another unnecessary road when there are roads that are in need of repair and widening in Pasco County. Also, if we continue the slicing and dicing of Pasco's environmental system, we will become another concretized Pinellas County. We really do not want to be like Pinellas County because what makes Pasco County unique is that we do have some green spaces left. These green spaces are more valuable than gold or diamonds. They are extremely valuable for aquifer recharging ecosystems and also for the health and welfare of our citizens. If Pasco becomes entirely a concretized city environment like Pinellas, people are no longer going to want to reside here. And again, any construction from with taxpayers' money needs to go into our existing infrastructure, um, and we do not need to continue the slicing and dicing of Pasco's ecosystems because we will suffer long-term consequences that are very, very detrimental to our community. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Um, we have one or two emails. I think it's two emails now that um, will be put into the record, if I'm not correct. Yeah, so we, we received two emails, one to be read. The other one is just to receive and file. Okay, so we can go ahead and read the one into the record, please. Okay, this email is from a Mr. Richard Somerville. He res, uh, his address is 16205 Larson Lane, Hudson, Florida, 34667, uh, and it regards agenda item number C30. Dear County Administrator Biles, please share this comment with the Pasco County Commissioners before the 51920 County Commission meeting. I'm against the county spending money on Sun Lake Boulevard as specified in memorandum number BA 20-0068 and budget amendment number 2013. The allocated amount is 3,450,000 of 10 million. This would allow the extension of Sun Lake Boulevard from Ridge Road extension to State Road 52. I am against this allocation and against the construction of Sun Lake Boulevard. More land needs to be preserved for nature and wildlife and to prevent species extinction. More roads contribute to more automobile traffic and more air pollution and more commuting and more greenhouse gases, which contributes to climate change. More roads means more development, which means more trees destroyed, which reduces the number of trees, which are important as carbon sink. Development also reduces the amount of carbon stored in the soil. Development also uses water and relies on stormwater ponds to recharge the aquifer that uses up more natural land. Floodplain compensation ponds, which are required if building in a floodplain, also uses up more natural land. For the above reasons, I am against the allocation of 3,450,000 of 10 million for Sun Lake Boulevard. Instead, please allocate this money to purchase lands for preservation, which will help wildlife and endangered species to survive, reduce traffic, and help prevent climate change. Sincerely, Richard Somerville. All right, thank you, ma'am. That will do it for public comment. We'll now Mr. end Chairman, that. Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes. Jack Mariano. The other letter that you got, where was that from? It was from uh, Diane Kobernick. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And that would be on okay, this afternoon's on. public hearing. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda, um, I have a full sheet with the following items listed. Um, C14, pull and revise, C17, pull and revise, C20, pull and revise, C21, pull and revise, C36, pull and revise, C37, pull and revise, C52, pull and revise. I am adding C36 for a discussion. Commissioners, do you have any other items you would like to pull or discuss? Seeing none. 
Move approval of remaining consent agenda. Second. Okay. So let me let's make, please do it with your names again. Jack I Mario, think I have move. Commissioner Merrick. Yeah. Motion Mike is well, seconded second. by Commissioner Well. Okay. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District one, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District three, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District four, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District five, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District two, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes five zero. Thank you. And we will move to C14, uh, Mr. Bailey. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this is Todd Bailey, Acting Assistant County Administrator for Development Services. This item was pulled for revision to correct Commissioner District from District 1 to District 2. We request that this item be approved upon such revision. Thank you. I'll take a motion. Move to approve the item with the correction. Commissioner, Commissioner Starkey. Starkey. Please restate second. your second. Second, Commissioner Jack Mariano. Thank you. I have a motion by Commissioner Starkey. I have a second by Commissioner Mariano. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. C 17, Chief Casson. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Scott Kasson, Fire Chief, Pasco Fire Rescue. Item C-17 included an incorrect attachment, number four, pertaining to the uh, SunBiz verification. That attachment has since been corrected to reflect the proper document. Move, Move to approve the, the item. This is Commissioner Starkey with the correction. Second, Jack Mariano. I have a motion, have a motion by Commissioner Starkey and second by Commissioner Mariano. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion, <clears throat> Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Um, C20. Um. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, C20 is for the design of the Land O'Lakes Detention Center. We received two signed original agreements um, from HOK that contained editing marks on pages 1, 20, and 27. Facilities removed those editing, editing marks uh, to provide clean pages. No other changes were made. Um, clean signed agreement has been sent to board records and administration and is presented here with a recommendation for approval. Move to approve C20 with items 1, 20, and 27 corrected. Commissioner Starkey. Second, Commissioner Mariano, with Sorry. more discussion first. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Starkey, a second by Commissioner Mario with discussion. Commissioner Mario, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm, I was looking at the details of the agreement, and it's going to be about four years of design work. Uh, the company's from Missouri. Uh, are we all comfortable with how long it's going to take? Because I haven't seen anything as... I know we had a lot of local companies I thought were going to be bidding on it, but um, I'm just wondering why there's only a, a few companies or why we ended up with one from Missouri. Mr. Baxter and Mr. Breitenbach, can you answer? Yeah, I'd be happy to answer. So we, we put together a, a, com, a committee that involved uh, Eric Breitenbach, myself, uh, TJ Pache, our chief project manager, um, a captain and a lieutenant from the sheriff's office to review all of the applications. Ultimately, it was decided that HOK uh, was, the, was the most qualified design firm. They are um, a, a leading design firm internationally. Um, and also the number one design firm when it comes to uh, detention design um, in the nation. And we were, uh, we were very impressed with their, with their scope and their understanding of, of what was necessary to build this jail. And the four-year time commitment is truly, uh, because of the, the process that we're going through with a construction manager at risk, the design firm is on, on standby throughout not only the design phase, but also the construction administration phase of this process to ensure that everything is built exactly to design. Mr. Mariano? Yeah, if everyone else is good with it, let's go. I just wish it didn't take four years. That's a long time. Question, Chairman. Go ahead, Commissioner Oakley. Yeah, I, uh, why does it take four years? Because, you know, that's a long time just in design. And, and we're running behind the eight ball trying to 
you know, have room for uh, detaining. So Just this, curious why it takes that long. Let me rephrase. The, the, the initial design period is estimated to take one year. The construction administration, which is also related to the design work, when the contractor actually takes over as the lead in the project, then the design firm takes a secondary role. Um, that will take the construction of the facility will take approximately three years total. Um, but the design portion is about a year to a year and a half. Okay, I understand. That's that's a step process, and I understand that. That's good. This is the the overall pro the overall project is four years. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Chairman, same thing as that, right? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion by Mr. Turkey. Yes, go ahead. Um, Jack Mariano. I, I hope that we're going to be involved through this process as well. I mean, we talked about mental health facilities located in the courthouse out in the same area. So I hope we're going to be involved in this whole process. What's going to go out there together? Because I haven't seen much of it, and I'm, I, I feel like we should have more involvement, at least presentation at some point. We can certainly ensure that you're involved in our stakeholder briefings and, and make sure that you're involved in the visioning sessions. Absolutely, sir. And I mean that as a commission, not just myself. Okay. Oh, with that, so um, with Commissioner Mariana's um, suggestion, I would, I would you know, go ahead and direct um, County Administrator if you would work with um, Andrew and, and Eric to maybe do a presentation in a future board meeting on, you know, following up with Commissioner Mariana's request. Yes, sir. Is that, that sufficient? No. Yes, sir. Great. All right, thank you all so much. I have a motion by Commissioner Starkey, a second by Commissioner Mariano. Um, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye, motion passes 5-0, thank you. Um, go, Mr. Baxter, again, uh, you're on C-21. Yes, sir, C-21 is a agreement for the hotel owner at Wiregrass. Um, the original agenda included uh, requesting approval of a second amendment to the ground lease and an acknowledgement of notice of leasehold mortgage. The second amendment to the ground lease agreement is not required and has been removed from the agenda. And now the agenda title reads, approval of acknowledgement of notice of leasehold mortgage, Wiregrass Hotel Owner LLC, Wesley Chapel Sports Park Campus Hotel Development, no funding required. The memo and attachments in SIRE reflect the correct content, but we have been renamed uh, and reloaded with the correct corrections. No changes uh, to the content of the form requiring signature is involved. Documents that have been uh, had title corrections include the cover sheet, agenda, and attachment one. And with these modifications, the facilities management department in consultation with the county attorney's office recommends approval. Mr. Baxter, a question for you. Um, this is executed, when do we expect them to um, finally break ground? Jane Fagan, actually, uh, this this was, uh, I'm, uh, quite honestly, I'm unsure, sir. Um, this was actually a, a, re a request from Main Sale directly to the county attorney's office, um, and we're representing it for the county attorney here at the board meeting. Uh, their, their bank, Snovis, is the one that required this uh, this modification, Mr. Biles? Do we have a guesstimate of when they're going to break ground finally? I'll I'll have to get you an answer on that. I don't know off the top of my head, and if I said something, it'd probably be wrong. But I, I do believe it's pretty soon. I do believe we have site plan plans in for review and current planning. But I'll have to get you an update on that. All right, great, thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Move approval, Ron Oakley. A motion by Commissioner Oakley. Second, Commissioner Starkey. A motion by Commissioner Oakley, a second by Commissioner Starkey. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye, motion passes 5-0, thank you. Um, C-36, Margaret Smith, and I was pulling this too, but I don't need to, we don't need to do this twice, so I'll have discussion after this is done. Good morning, sir. Margaret Smith, uh, County Engineer. Um, we pulled this to update the attachment number 10, the, uh, the bid A form for this project to extend the Asbel project from, east of, from US 41 to Central Boulevard. 
Okay, is that it for you? Okay. All right, thanks. So this final section is just, you know, with the team, Margaret and your team, I just want to make sure that we stay on task and we stay on the timeline and meet the deadlines in the timeline, because obviously this is very important road um, and the signal uh, 41 is very important to the citizens along that area. Um, so I just want to make sure, I just want to reiterate um, timeliness is how timeliness is important in this um, project. And I want to make sure that if we stay on schedule or ahead of schedule. That's the only comment. Yes, sir. That is our goal. Thank you, Thank you sir. Any other comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Ron Oakley moves. Commissioner Starkey seconds. I have a motion by Commissioner Oakley. I have a second by Commissioner Starkey. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. All right, motion passes 5-0. Thank you. C-37, Margaret Ms. Smith. Hi, Margaret Smith, County Engineer again. Uh, we uh, modified the memo for this, for this agenda item to remove the rest, reference to task order and instead refer to the uh, professional service agreement. And with that change, uh, we also took it out of both Exhibit A and Exhibit B. And with, that change, with those changes, uh, recommend approval. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Any discussion? Move approval, Jack Mariano. Second, Ron Oakley. I have a motion by Commissioner Mariano. I have a second by Commissioner Oakley. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye, motion passes 5-0. Thank you so much. Um, C-52, Mr. Shoemate. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, this is Mike Shoemate, uh, Director of uh, Animal Services. C-52 is a uh, approval for exempt purchases uh, for the pair of vets, uh, various vets throughout the county uh, that participate in our spay-neuter program uh, for the remainder of FY21. Uh, it's revised because the original memo had the full budget and fund balance amounts rather than just the amounts that we're actually paying the vets. So we're recommending approval with the change. Thank you, Mr. Schumann. Any questions? Move approval, Jack Mariano. Second, Ron Oakley. I have a motion by Commissioner Mariano, second by Commissioner Oakley. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. That does it for the consent. We will now move on to our regular agenda. Um, we also do have uh, two addendums, or one, um, which is uh, Pasco Coronavirus Relief PPE Reimbursement Program, and AR2, Supporting Documentation for R2 on the BCC agenda. We'll go forward with R1 now, and I think um, I'm going to pass it either to the clerk or to Mr. Bias. You want me to go? Yes, sir. This is a uh, R1 is a request from the clerk's office, and I was just going to turn it over to the clerk to discuss it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman Moore and members of the county commission. This uh, R1 is my request to the county on behalf of my office to distribute to the office a portion of the coronavirus relief funds of which the county received, as you know, over 96 million. The U.S. Department of Treasury identified eligible expenses for the use of these funds, and some of the eligible expenses I seek um, this money for is for payroll expenses related to public safety and human services as a result of COVID-19 personal protection equipment and safeguards to provide for a safe work environment. In my request, I provided the worst case scenario through the end of this calendar year. And there are many unknowns, so projection was difficult, but I am projecting a need for 7.4 million through December 31st, 2020, as worst case scenario with 1.9 million to be paid on or before June 1st. Um, I have also requested in my letter to have the county administrator provide the additional funds up to a maximum of 7.4 million if needed. 
And also my office would provide documentation to the county administrator at his request and any funds not used would be returned. My letter included um, in the agenda item had additional information and I am happy to answer any questions or concerns you may have. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Any questions at this time from the board? Any questions by the board? Any comments? Move approval. Seeing none. Jack Mariano. I have a motion by Commissioner Mariano. Second, Mike Wells. I have a second by Commissioner Wells. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Moving on to R2. R2 is Waterfront Redevelopment Project Restore City of Port Ritchie. Improve water quality of waterways and navigability. No funding required. And attached to that, um, Mr. Steinsneider, um, AR2, can we not denim to R2, can we not attach that to AR2 or was, would it be voted on separately, sir? I believe AR2 is just more supplemental information for, for R2. It's not a separate action item. Okay, so we'll just attach, obviously, AR2 to R2. I don't know if you need that in the motion, okay? And so we're gonna go ahead, um, Mike Herbala, um, I think it's your show now. And if I'm not correct, we still we also have people on the line. Um, if you could explain that, Mr. Kabbalah, and just and just to be once that time comes, um, I want to make sure that you know our back and forth still goes through the chair when it comes to questions and answers for the other people on the line. Okay. Certainly, Commissioner. So Mike Carballa, Assistant County Administrator, Public Infrastructure, and we do have representatives of the city of Port Ritchie on the line. So once I complete a brief overview presentation, I will ask them for any comments, and then we will uh, turn it back over to you, Mr. Chair, for, for any questions or discussion amongst the board, if that's okay. So okay, uh, like, uh, that's, that's fine. You can pass it on. But again, when it comes to the question, if there's question and answer between the board and them, let's make sure this goes through to the chair. Absolutely, sir. So the uh, project is, is related to the city of Port Ritchie's uh, project that they submitted uh, as a Restore Act project several years ago to the RAC. The original project proposal was actually broken into three phases, which were to address navigation issues, access to water, as well as water quality. They broke that down into three phases. The first phase, which was uh, pretty much a dredging of commercial channels, as well as some redevelopment of their waterfront park and, and waterfront areas, uh, and their waterfront district, excuse me, and to include the relocation of a boat ramp from, from Nick's Park over to uh, their waterfront park. The uh, subsequent phases, phase two and phase three, were primarily surrounding dredging to provide a water quality improvement, which was the dredging of a perimeter can canal around Miller's Bayou, followed by a number of, uh, I will refer to them as man-made finger canals uh, throughout, throughout the Port Ritchie area. The original estimate for this that was presented to the Restore Committee was approximately $12.2 million. Next slide, please. Graphically, this is, this is what was presented. The purple line represents the commercial channels in the first phase, and the areas shaded on land represent some of the parks and waterfront district improvements. The yellow represents the perimeter canal, which was phase two. The blue lines represent the man-made canals, which were to follow in phase three. The history, go ahead and next slide, Todd. Uh, the history of the approval, uh, once, once the RAC prioritized uh, the multi-year implementation plan elements, it was brought before the board in fiscal year 15 uh, for, for ultimate approval. Newport, uh, the city of Port Ritchie, excuse me, that a portion of their phase one project was funded to the level of $667,000, which was primarily um, uh, that the portions were the commercial canal dredging as well as, as, well as a boat ramp. Other projects that were approved in that multi-year uh, implementation plan included Orange Lake with the city of Newport Ritchie, SunWest Park, and were later in later years amended to include Key Vista as well as some school board projects. In fiscal year 18, uh, once the project was further developed, it, it went before the board as a subrecipient agreement so the city of Port Ritchie could receive uh, funds from the treasury to execute the project. 
As we all know, in fiscal year 20, uh, the bids came back and some restructuring was, was required. So in uh, November of last year, the agreement was terminated and the board directed staff to maintain the allocation that the Restore Committee uh, had, had set aside for the project to work with the City of Port Ritchie to resubmit the project and also explore alternative um, uh, funding avenues as well. Go ahead to the next slide. This uh, more or less illustrates uh, what the revised project looks like. And it's not from engineered plans, but actually the Channel 1 and 26A actually extend a little further to the south, um, probably, you know, another, uh, maybe another, another, thousand feet or so to the to the south more or less but that's that's an illustration generally of what what the new project entails as well as uh, you'll notice that some of the other elements from phase one that were not originally included in the, in the first first portion of phase one but still part of phase one some some lighting some uh, improvements within the uh, the waterfront district area next slide so the, revi so the revised project does represent a reduction in scope. So the boat ramp was removed and some of the dredging was removed. However, there were other elements that were included in the original phase one project that were added back to sort of make up the difference. Um, so with that, staff believe that the revised project does meet the eligibility criteria under the Restore Act, namely the infrastructure projects benefiting the economy. Uh, it's also important to note that we did have some initial discussions with the Water Management District, uh, and while dredging projects from a stormwater perspective weren't necessarily looking favorable for cooperative funding, water quality type initiatives very well could, and we are currently exploring some options uh, that, that could uh, achieve some of the goals of, of the, the city's uh, phase three with, with some, some canal work there from a water quality perspective, but we are just in the initial phases of that, and we expect probably about a year or so before we start to uh, determine the ultimate feasibility of that. With that, uh, staff would recommend that the board approve the multi-year, the revised multi-year implementation plan and resubmit to Treasury to continue the, um, uh, the project. Uh, and with that, Mr. Chair, if it's all right, I'd like to rec uh, recognize, if you could recognize uh, some members of the city of Port Ritchie, I believe, I'm not sure if they're mayor or vice mayor are on the line, but uh, I know they wish to address the board. Okay, so um, who is on the line from the city of Port Ritchie, mayor or vice mayor? Good morning, it's uh, Mayor Scott Tremblay and uh, Vice Mayor William Dittmers here as well. Okay, please go ahead with the presentation. Thank you. First of all, I want to appreciate you for uh, everything that you've done to help us and, and for all your time. Um, as you guys know, this is a project that's been going on for about six years now. Um, from the beginning, this was uh, a project that was a matching fund. We expended as a city in good faith $337,000 to set up um, where we're at now. What we have done at this point is set up a DMMA site uh, for spoils. We have the dredging permits in place and we have the canals dredged to get from the main canals over to the DMMA site, so we are set up um, and ready to go for uh, dredging projects as a city. Um, that having been said, one of the biggest needs that we have in our community and our council has discussed is Channel 126A. Um, and in essence, that is the main channel that starts where Waterfront Park is, where the beginning of our bayou is, runs uh, throughout um, our uh, district with all our um, commercial boating and then out to the river. Um, and then on the south end, that's where uh, Nix Park uh, boat ramps also meet. Um, so there's a great need in our community to have this project complete as it will link, link the bayou to the river, allowing um, our, our boating public and, and all our private boaters to get out of the bayou into the river. It will also allow um, folks that are putting their boats in Nix Park to get out. It also allows commercial boats that we have, which are shrimping boats and boats for tourism to go. Um, that having been said, because of the value of, of the project, um, we were looking uh, to add to the scope, well, as we are developing our waterfront overlay district, um, the city has, uh, we voted to put in another $200,000 for the improvement of the waterfront overlay district, and that will come out of CRA funding, um, which will, uh, include hopefully some sidewalks, road improvements, some lighting, and some other improvements in the waterfront overlay district. Also, we have a grander view as we are working on the next uh, 
uh, where the boat ramps are in Nix Park. We have some some uh, great money there to improve the boat ramps, and we'll be exploring some improvements in that area as well. Um, based on uh, the, the crux to all this is that the main canal has to be dredged for us to really proceed with the rest of the plans that we have uh, for the city. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, did you say the vice mayor on the line? Did he have something you wanted to add? No, he said that it would be cumulative to what I've already said. Okay, great. Back to you, Mr. Kabbalah, before I answer any questions or have any questions from the board. Uh, staff has no further comments, sir. All right, now we're back to the board. Questions for Mr. Kabbalah or the mayor or vice mayor of Fort Ritchie on this project? Chairman Moore, it's Commissioner Wells. Uh, Commissioner Wells, go ahead, sir. Um, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Looking at the map, and um, I, I know the mayor, I know Mr. Cabala just brought up that it wasn't going to come all the way down. From what I understand, the dredging of Channel 1 is going to come all the way down a little past Nick's Park to include cleaning out the sand there by the where you can't get into uh, Whiskey Joe's. And I can tell you, like Miss Virginia, that is stationed just to the north of Nick's Park and just north of Hooters. At low tide, they can't get out to take folks fishing. And this, to me, is about commerce. The shrimp boats, I know if it's, it's a negative tide, they cannot get out. So this is going to be a good thing. But the map that you've shown us, Mike, doesn't show really it going down along the boats, going down in front of Hooters, um, in front of Nick's Park. I just want to make, and then down to clean out, out front of Whiskey Joe's. I just want to make sure, Mayor, that that is part of th this project, that, that that will be done. Well, the only part that I'm not sure of from engineering plans, um, when you get further south past Nix Park, there's a um, there's a little bit of sand that was pushed up or debris that was pushed up from the casino boat into the channel. That is the only thing that I'm not sure is included. I think everything else is. However, the casino boat has where it's at um, plenty of water to get out. Um, so part of our engineering plans were, were based on need. Um, and it looks like the, the need was was what we have engineered at this point. Um, and the only exception, I think, to what your statement would be, um, from my understanding, would be the little bit of, there's like a little sandbar that's been pushed up from the casino boat, but that's further south by where the bridge is. And that's the only part that isn't included. However, I can tell you from the original dredge from the 337, we can get barges with the sand under the bridge and around Channel 19 and out. So. Um, there's plenty of water for us to get barges in and out. I, I think that um, that should be sufficient in terms of need-wise where we're at. Well, okay, and I just think about, you know, you got the Lowe's putting the marina in down there next to catches, I mean, which is going to be a great thing for the city and the county. And again, I, you know, I've been very clear, you know, we are a team on this. We're not separate. Same with the Nick's ramp, boat ramp, as far as I'm concerned. You know, we will work together to, to do improvements at Nick's Park because I know we've discussed that, you know, 80, 90% of the folks that use Nix Park are county residents. We want to be together on those improvements, and we set aside the $5 million to use for boat ramp improvements. Um, and I know that Dan's had some discussions with, uh, you know, Mr. Lupo to kind of work together on that as well. So we're, we're a team here. I just want to make sure that, it, again, the maps that we're seeing do not show it going in front of Hooters, in front of Nix Park, which, again, I know it's needed because I've been there where the Miss Virginia cannot get out. And we hate to see that. And we want folks to be able to get into Whiskey Joe's. I know Commissioner Starkey's talked about her boat not being able to get over the sand. And it's an issue there. So it needs to be cleared out. I just want to, again, it's, it's a good project. Uh, my opinion, I think we support the city. And I know it was unanimous for you guys to move forward with this project. But to me, it comes down to the commerce, the you know tourism. And, and we are a team. So I just want to double check on the, the map. That's all. Yes, Commissioner. And if, if if the board uh, likes, we can achieve, I'm sorry, we can get the engineering plans from the city of Port Ritchie, which would show specifics. That's just a graphical representation of, of what, you know, the understanding of, of what was submitted to us. So we can certainly provide that. Okay. That, that'll be all, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I'm going to sort of jump on that one a little bit. Um, and I know what Commissioner um, Wells is speaking of. If, between the Hooters and the dock, that sand, it gets in addition to the other areas by Whiskey Joe's, it's pretty bad there. So I, I, I guess I'm confused why that wouldn't be included. If you're going to gonna dredge, man, just open this bad boy up, right? This is Commissioner Starkey. 
Um, yeah, we ran percent. aground on that sand in front of Whiskey Joe's, and my husband said he won't go there by boat anymore. So um, I do think that that uh, sandbar that I think is from the uh, un allegedly from the gambling boat, but I think they went to court and got a ruling that it wasn't from them. I think that that buildup definitely needs to go um, for the uh, betterment of that whole waterfront area. Thank you. And you're right, Commissioner Starkey. Going back to what Commissioner Wells also stated about some of the shrimp boats, too. I think you stated, Commissioner Wells, if I'm not correct, it's difficult for them to get in and out, correct? It is. At, 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 like I said, when the tides are low, which is, you know, several days a month, they can't get out. I mean, I've been there when the, they just can't, they can't get across. Right out front of Hooters, it gets very shallow. Mr. Chairman, Jack Mariano. Uh, Commissioner Mariano, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as talking about Nick's Park and all, I mean, part of this project initially was going to be improving Waterfront Park. There was some issues with that. Um, that's why we're doing, talking about Nick's Park. But I agree with Commissioner Wells. If we can use the $5 million grant or even voter improvement funds, that's where that funding should take place to go do that. That park, from what I understand from years ago, over 30 plus years ago, it was actually funded with a county park working with the city to get that done. It wasn't just on the city on its own, but we worked together on a grant project with that. Um, talking about the sandbar, in a meeting uh, we had recently with the city, our team, our consultant, we actually talked about that Whiskey Joe sandbar um, and the issue that it had out there. And we were told at that meeting, and I was, had been told before, at the, before that meeting, that no, that sandbar was not included into the uh, cleaning out of the dredge. And uh, Commissioner Wells, you're right in the money as far as, and Commissioner Starkey, it's a very integral part of Whiskey Joe's to be done, to be fixed. I mean, they have a parking issue there that would def definitely help that out. And Catches has bought the marina next door to it, and they've clearly said that that sandbar stretches from there, goes all the way up through, and actually affects the, their business with the marina as well. So that does need to be included. I don't think they've got the permits the way they lined up for that. Uh, and if it was, it's a different one I was told in separate meetings. I would like to go back to the presentation given to the Restore Our Committee. Now, those of you may know, with five different states affected by the Gulf, uh, Gulf oil spill that was done, we're the only state that had local control over any pots of money whatsoever. We have 23 counties that work together. We all work together on different things, and one of the things we talked about was improving the water quality in the Gulf of Mexico. We talked about trying to use a committee to science-based decision-making across the board to make sure we're going to do the right things for the environment every step of the way. Uh, we talked about making sure we're going to put these grants forward, but not only just put the grant forward, but look at leveraging and all about improving the water quality. When I look at the agenda item that was given to us on the very opening part of the background summary alternative analysis, it says what's going to be done, which Mr. Carbell has said, other items from the initial scope was submitted and approved by the U.S. Department of Treasury will not be completed. At the bottom of the same opening thing of page one of two on the uh, memorandum, it says Pasco County has a grant agreement with the U.S. Department of Treasury and a sub agreement with the City of Port Ritchie request funds from Restore Act to complete this project. Amended multi-year implementation plan is required to us to change in the scope of the project from what was initially submitted. If you look at the map, Mike, if you go back to the map that you had up there with where the dredging was going to be, the amended multi-year plan that was put in is, has been changed. Part of it was the boat ramp park was going to change, and, and I understand why it happened, why it had to go back. But if you look at the pink lines that are up there, as they go forward, the Gill Dog Channel that goes all the way down there was one that's an integral part as far as water quality goes. That would actually take stormwater out into the Gulf. And, and create more flow into the Gulf. The other channels to above would help with water quality substantially. And Commissioner Wells, as we talked many times, and you made the comment before, as far as I'm okay to do dredging with, with stormwater funds and, and, and to make sure we're dredging these canals out there, they are going to help with, the, with stormwater. And the Commission supported step, uh, the state expenditure plan for Part 3 for the Port Ritchie outfall. Everybody's seen the map, and I want to say staff is doing a phenomenal job tying those in together, working with Swift Mud. Uh, in the meeting we had with David Deloche, the mayor, the manager, and our team, we talked very clearly about how the water quality would be affected and the stormwater benefits to it. Now, when the presentation was done with Swift Mud, from what I understand, we broke it into parts. 
you can break it down, you can combine it together. The benefit was probably doing one large project altogether. Having said that, something when I look at the narrative that's being submitted to Treasury, it talks about the opening as far as having 25 severely impacted water bodies and finger canals within the city limits. Channels 14 through 18 will directly connect into a stormwater pond along Old Post Road that has a connection and can be a potential connection that will definitely help with the stormwater flow. It will also help with all the properties on there, which there's been a lot of willingness for people to donate into it to actually help dredge out those canals, which will help with water quality, which is what this thing's all about. So knowing that we're looking at 25 severely impacted channels, we've got a project that abuts working with Swift Mud right now to it. And even if we can't use it with the stormwater benefit, the water quality benefit is there. And that should be looked at before we pick, make this thing going forward. Um, when you look at the Waterley Overlay District, it talks about project objectives. And this is what was submitted to the original group. It talked about improved boater access to the o waterfront overlay district. It does some of that, but along those channels, there's 80 more residents that are there that would definitely be impacted in a better way for boater access. Improving the water quality. It talks about the waterways in entering the Pithlaskoti River, but Miller's Bayou will dramatically get a benefit by doing the water quality by dredging the 14 to 18 channels. Not the, the water benefit of dredging, what we're going to dredge is very minimal as far as effect goes. Improving the habitats for plant and, and, and life in the city's waterways will be dramatically helped even more if we do those channels along the way. Disbursement of time water runoff should not even be on this list whatsoever because there's no stormwater benefit for the runoff. Increased tidal flow, the tidal flow will go up into these canals back and forth and create a better, a much better way uh, for, for tidal flow. Um, when it talks about the purpose, uh, at the bottom of the page as far as your objectives go, the project benefit provides numerous benefits to improve, improve water quality. I will suggest to you, I don't even know why the Gill Dog Channel get pulled out of this. I still haven't got an explanation why. It's the one that actually affects the water quality. So I don't know if it's a political game that's being played with a manager not liking an owner or whatever's going on in there. I don't know. I don't care. But that channel should not have been pulled out of there. It, when they talk about a more aquatic ecosystem, that's by improving by the water flow. So back to storm, uh, improve stormwater quality. On a storm surge, that water's going to come in. If you have a full gulf, it's not going out. Yeah, that that's, yeah the, the pink line that, that... That's on here. The Gill Dog Channel is on They have on pulled it. it out into their new map. The new map they, they submitted, they've taken that out. This map is not correct? This was the, That's original, the original project. That's the original presentation. When, and, oh, and, oh. and just to go back, <laughs> Commissioner Starkey, when they presented this to us, this is a $12 million project. They're saying they don't have the money to go finish all the other projects. So we're looking at, we need to go isolate what this project really is. That's what I want to kind of get to. They're looking at just this project that's taken out. So there's no water quality benefit. There's nothing to help the Gulf. And it goes completely against what was presented to the RAC. If you look at the scoring sheet that was that submitted being, that we're signing on, because we're the, we're the recipient, the committee, uh, or Curtis Franklin has a submission on, and on his chart, it shows all the boxes you could go with the 10 criteria that are a qualifying eligible activity. That criteria right now has just one box checked on 6A on infrastructure projects benefiting the economy or, or ecological resources. So out of all 10 boxes where they have scored before, now they only check one box with the project in front of them. The screen that you have up the, on the screen, if you look up there, the very second, the second project there says the Waterfront Park Revitalization Plan. Now, if you take the scoring, which could be up to five points, the, the scoring there go all the way across where the, the red, red star is. It goes all the way over. They score points on every single category. Even to timing, if you give them a five, they're a, a very good score at 3195. If you take this new plan, look at the bottom screen. Just by the official chart we're submitting to Treasury that Curtis Langston signed as part of this document, it's going to go to Treasury now, we have one box checked on 6A. And even if you give them a perfect score for timing, their project is a 10. It has now gone from the, near the top of the list to the very bottom of the list. Now, if you look at the documents that was given to us as well, the same thing attaches to this thing that's going to Treasury. When you look at this on page 
52 out of 57. Um, it goes to all direct comp component projects submitted for consideration of funding via the Restore Act were screened, scored, criteria specifically de developed for that funding opportunity. See attachment D. I will tell you there's no attachment D because there's no scientific backup for this. This talks about later on how over 40 projects were presented to the RAC, which held 15 public meetings, including the City of Port Ritchie. The committee members graded the project and staff collated results. The document we're going to be sending over has had no RAC approval for just this scope of business, and now we're on the hook because if this thing goes, as it will say, the right for the Treasury to disallow costs and recover funds on the basis of, of a later audit or of, 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 of other review. Page 17 of the, of the thing says, the Treasury determines the remaining portion of this award will not accomplish if Treasury determines that the remaining portion of this award will not accomplish the, the purpose of the award, Treasury may, be, may terminate this award in its entirety. I will tell you, we have more environmental people, all the consortium meetings, we always had environmental people there. The room was always packed with different things there. We have got a great reputation with the consortium. We're the first ones to get projects through. The work that Curtis Franklin did, he led the way. He made us look great as a county across the state, across the, across the the whole Gulf, because we have done things in such a great way. When we look at what was supposed to be done between the leveraging, the public input, this project being as it's submitted, maybe it could scape through, but if it bounces back, it's going to be on us. It's going to damage our reputation. It's not going to help the, the water quality in the Gulf, and we're going to be looking bad going through this, and we may lose the funding. And do you think you're going to get it back from Port Ritchie? I would say no. I strongly recommend you bring us back to the table like we tried to do with Swift Mud, because we had the meeting with Swift Mud, our consultant said there is a connection with stormwater. I've talked with the Swift Mud representative that we have, and they say if you put the whole thing together, you'd have had a better shot. Especially if we get into construction, it's going to be cheaper to do everything in one shot. But those five canals right there will help with stormwater. They'll help with storm surge issues. It'll help the city in a much better way and improve the water quality of the Gulf. What you're submitting here right now does not do it. Now, I just want to say this. A year and a half ago, I met with Mayor Tremblay. I met with Councilman Dittmer, writing Guild Dog's property with Eric, his partner, and another gay, a gentleman named Chuck Puccini. We talked about how to improve the removal of that DMA site. That DMA site right now has got to go to our landfill, class one. It's going to cost a fortune. Our own staff does not want us to take that because it's going to take up vital land, uh, landfill space. We can do a better way by combining the soils and working with it. Now, granted, testing's got to be done on it, but from the bid that was done a year and a half ago that we kind of extrapolated out, uh, if you'd show the bid from Aqua Creek Technology and the dredging cost estimates, these Averoff numbers doesn't include everything, but the numbers are very close from one year to another year. A company called Divecom, uh, Gill Dogs went out and actually got a price on what it would take to go dredge their channel. Now, keep this in mind. Did, did everyone see the letter from Gill Dogs? Did everybody get the letter from Gill Dogs and read it? I think I did. Uh, so let, me, let me just read it to you. It's not that long. Thank you for considering the following information. My, my name is Eric Soyenin. I am the managing partner for Rio LLC, which holds the title to the property located at 5419 Treadwell Drive in Port Ritchie. This is right across from where Gill Dogs is. The parcel, includes, the parcel includes a submerged land in Channel 18. We also, also hold the title through Bayou Brothers to Argonne Parcel. Parcel number is on there. This is a five-acre parcel located directly adjacent to Gill Dog in Channel 18. The purpose of this letter is to present some potential synergy in regards to Port Ritchie's effort to dredge, as well as some other channels the county is studying for dredge work. My understanding is that if an owner of a property is willing to accept clean dredge spoils, and he highlights in big print dredge spoils cl uh, clean, it eliminates a great deal of complications in government red tape. This information was provided to a gentleman named Devin Barisma, managing director for a company called Divecom Marine. Divecom provide, provided me with a proposal to dredge Channel 18 and permanently locate spoils on Argonne Court. He did not see this any great problem, and it was his suggestion. I believe the county has a copy of his proposal to me. And then we extrapolated out from there, got our own proposal. Devin informed me that his company does major dredging projects all over the world, and he could be a good source of information for the city and the county. 
I have not taken the time due to the vetting of DiveCon, but I have no reason to doubt the legitimacy to this, of this point. In addition, in using Channel 18 as an access to the Argon spoil site, which is about 75 yards away, as opposed to the current plan of navigating a barge under around US-19 bridge to a small DMA site, dewatering, waiting for it to dry before moving, then trucking it to a permitting site, could save the taxpayers a tremendous amount of money. Pumping the spoils over or possibly under across the street to o through Opost through an existing drainage pipe could p potentially eliminate the need for any trucking expense. I believe Newport Ritchie built a scaffolding and rig, pumped the spoils over the street on Orange Lake Project. And by the way, Commissioner Starkey, those apartments look awesome. Yeah, they look great. They've done a great job there. <laughs> Uh, these are several other benefits of dredging Channel 18 and taking this pass. Presumably quicker relief from storm surge with a deeper channel, tourism improvements by making charter boats visible from US-19, more boater access with added dockage, wet slips, and boat lifts. In closing, I was in involved and present at the meetings when the restoric money was pledged to Port Ritchie. We had and still have very high hope for this area. The Port Ritchie community has well over $2 million of taxpayer money invested in the project, and we need to we need the county's help to make sure the money has not been wasted. My family has a significant amount of money invested in Port Ritchie improvements as well. We recently lost a sale of the Argonne property, partially due to excessive fill that we would be required to raise the property to approximately six feet. Simply put, we need the fill. Thank you for your consideration as exploring this further. Please make sure this letter is included with the recorded documents for the BOCC, BOCC meeting held today. So with all that said, I don't want to take the money away. I want to see the dredging get done, but I want to see it done right. Those channels going from the proposal that I went to the city myself with a year and a half ago, as well as my private meeting with the, the two councilmen, I want to make sure that we do this thing right. And if, if we got the risk of Treasury coming back at us, we've done nothing for leveraging going in there, we can do better for the citizens of Port Richard and the citizens of Pasco County. So we can go, they can go to even keep the 200 grand and let them go to the street improvements. I don't care. We can probably even include that in when we do the underwater pass project. They can even go to do the waterfront project. We can go fund that with the boating money. But put this dredging money where it needs to go to improve the water quality. Start with these channels. And you might even be able to go, if you go to the original map up there that was shown, with the, all, the, all the lines with the 25 channels they keep on talking about, you might even be able to go that full yellow line all the way up those channels, and who knows, you might even go further. When you have a big bid, and keep in mind, this whole thing is all prefaced on one bid coming in, and the bid's getting higher than expected. The shift, I don't understand the shift. There's no reason to pull the Gid Gidlog channel out to go add these streetscape improvements. That channel should have been left in anyway. So I'm going to say this again, and you know, our staff did a great job working on this thing, and Mike Carbella for the, for all that you do, I mean, you've got the busiest guy on the planet, you do a great job. With the scope that was given in front of you, I understand how this could have happened, but I'm going to tell you it would be a travesty if we made this step forward, knowing we can get seven channels for the price of two and improve water quality for the Gulf of Mexico and help to get the city get the other things they want to still get done, we can still get those done. So I say we bring them back to the table, let's go work this thing out, and not just work with stormwater, but water quality with swift mud. If we get the matching funds, even if that 800 grand is the number, if we get matching funds with it, we're still at the same number. And this, I will tell you, there's a better chance to do something better. I'll explain this to you. The Restore Act money right now doesn't allow, the state doesn't allow you to have matching funds. And when I say that, it's a swift mud policy. We could actually take a look and possibly push to not only get the, seven, uh, the 667 for a match money, we could go look at all the money we're putting in to the, uh, the Magnolia Valley project, Port Ritchie Outfall project, and try to tap into that. We will be the first county to do it. Talking to Brian, Brian Armstrong, CEO of SwiftMud, there's a possibility, but like he said from the get-go, submit a plan. So I'm gonna motion that we cancel this project and do not approve this. That's my motion. I, Commissioner I, Oakley, oh wait, no, Commissioner Oakley has his hand up for like 15 minutes. Okay. Sorry, oh, Commissioner Oakley. I, I, I'm gonna put it down. So, I'm hold my motion back until we have further discussion. <laughs> I have motion on the terms. Wait, wait. My hand was motion. Guys, hold on. I have a motion. <laughs> I have a motion on the table now. I need everybody to one second, please. I have Commissioner Oakley has the floor. I have a motion on the table. I'm going to Commissioner Oakley. 
I, uh, first thing I'd like to say is I'm not as familiar with the waterways on the west side of our county like I should be. I've been out there and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's a beautiful location area in our county that I never realized we even had. So, but uh, the time I've been there and seen, I, I see the issues and boats can't get out of canals and boats and especially if you got shrimpers over there and they can't get out when they need to get out to do the commercial fishing and others. I appreciate um, Commissioner Mariano, Commissioner Wells, and Commissioner Starkey of their knowledge of those house, which I do not uh, know that much about. But uh, a, one question comes to mind, and I am for this project because we've held it up, uh, it sounds like six years at least now. So I like to see things move forward rather than be held up before we move them you know, forward. At the same time, uh, I guess, Mike Cabela, could you answer this question of the fact, if we're doing that first phase of that dredging, how far from that is the sandbar that they're talking about that's not part of this program? So, Commissioner, I would, if, it, if the city of Port Ritchie is still on the line, I'd, I'd like for them to clarify that. Uh, we, we worked off the information that, that was provided, and I don't have the engineering plans. So I, I don't know if the mayor or vice mayor or any of your staff are available that could answer that question specifically. Okay. If they're not, that's okay. We can reach out and get that information. The reason I'm asking that is if it's not very far from where you're going to dredge to, it's cheaper for us to go forward and dredge that sandbar out at the same time we're dredging very close to that sandbar. So I would like to look into that as an addition to this, not adding it on now, but in the near future when we're out there actually doing the work, be able to raise the money to take care of that at the same time. That ha to me, that gives you a more completed project. And um, this has been too long already before the past six years trying to get to this point of waiting to do something in that area for the, for the boaters and for our citizens in that area mm -hmm. and the businesses out there. So I'm very much for this project and I'd like to see it go forward. Um, dropping back to go do something else again. I, we can still work toward uh, funding and add those on at the end of this, but this is a thing we need to be looking at to get started. Uh, if we don't ever get started, we never get to the end. So I would appreciate if we, we look at that situation. So I'm in favor of this project starting, not, uh, not setting it up. Thank you, Commissioner Oakley. And next, um, I still have a motion on the floor. I'm going to Commissioner Starkey now. She was after Commissioner Oakley. Um, uh, and uh, we apparently do have the Port Ritchie folks on the line here, so I do have some questions as well. Um, I think I would like to see that. I think it's Channel 18. Uh, the cha I'd like to know why that was dropped. I think that's a really important channel for the downtown and wondered... Uh, you know, I'd like to see all of this dredged, obviously, but I do agree with Commissioner Oakley that we need to at least get something going. Um, so I wonder about adding Channel 18 and then removing that sandbar in front of Whiskey Joe's. What, what does it take to add that to this project? So, Mayor Tremblay, if you're on the line, if you could answer those questions, we'd appreciate it. I'll do the best I can. I can tell you that when the bids originally came in, um, they came in pretty close to about half a million dollars per canal. And the reason being is one of the ways to cut costs, as Commissioner Mariano said, would be if we could have had a spoil site where we could have uh, put our spoils. The problem is that the toxicity level of the spoils as they've been tested um, put us in a class one landfill, which is quite expensive. And I don't know of any other way to do that since our soil's already been scientifically tested through channel 19 and and so we already know kind of what direction uh, that is headed channel 18 um, is a channel that runs between waterfront park and uh, the gill dogs which is a business owner um, channel 18 uh, would have um, some benefit um, the one of the issues we have with waterfront park is it's a passive park we're not allowed to have boats with with motors on them we're not allowed to have boat ramps there um, because of some usage restrictions to the land. That was the reason that our council decided to 
approve based on the limited funding that we had, which was the 667, um, which would include uh, the dredging, which links the bayou to, like I said, the river. Um, the reason why that's important is, is I know that uh, Commissioner Mariano expressed an interest in dredging all these other canals. However, dredging those canals has no benefit to our boating public if they can't get from the bayou to the river. Um, so that was the logic behind the amount of money we had, the bids, the way the bids came in. Um, it, it, it seemed to us most logical to, to dredge that uh, main canal that, that links the bayou to the river. Also, in response to Commissioner Oakley's inquiry, all the commercial, commercial fishing boats that we have are along that channel, uh, 1 and 26A, which would be part of the dredge. So it would relieve um, the pressure in terms of the commercial fishing industry. Um, that's where all our commercial fishing boats are. So it would have um, a great impact on our, uh, the commercial ability or the commercial impact would be good for our city. So, um, so it does cover that commercial area. Let, let me ask you, because the one time we took our boat to Whiskey Joe's and we hit that sandbar, we um, tied up because we couldn't get into Whiskey Joe's, uh, I guess it would be just south of it, I think on a commercial um, pier. And so there were a lot of boats, commercial boats tied up on that pier, which um, to me is kind of falling apart and was kind of sketchy to even walk on. But I did, Commissioner Wells, are there not some commercial boats south of, south of Whiskey Joe's there? Chairman Moore. Um, Commissioner Starkey, they, that's where Lowe's, and you heard Commissioner Marion talk about it, Lowe's has purchased that property. Oh, They're going to okay. put a marina there. I believe they've already ripped out the docks, and the mayor could answer that. I haven't been over there, but, okay. but that's the plan is they're going to redo it. It'll so be in a marina. They need that sandbar gone then. Yes, that, that would be good. So um, yeah, I, 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 I want to I move forward, but I, I want to I help more of the waterfront there. What, what kind of cost do you think it would be to bring that, even if you don't dredge the whole thing, but just dredge over there in front of that new marina and Whiskey Joe's, and, and maybe they would help pitch in. I don't know if you've talked to them, but what, how much more are we talking, if you know that answer? The answer is I don't know because it wasn't permitted. What I can tell you is the channel actually runs to the west of coming in. So, so right. to get from the river under the bridge and around to Channel 19 and, and up the river is not a problem. The only problem is with boats coming in and out of Whiskey Joe's, um, which really generally are commercial boats, but they're, they're recreational boats to come in and out for dinner. Um, so the answer is I, I don't know what the cost would be to dredge that. I, I can tell you that the per canal, the, the average cost um, with disposal and, and the actual dredge itself has been about a half million dollars. Um, so that's why we are where we're at um, because of the cost of the dredge. So for a half million dollars more, we could get that area done? Is that what I heard? No, I, Mike Carbala. I think you missed a key point. It's not part of the permit either. So you would have to go back and expend, extend the permit. So, <clears throat> you know, if you want to move forward now, you, you need to approve this project because that's what's permitted. And then, you know, either the city or us can work together on extending the permit to include this area. But I would, I mean, I would, that's what I would, that would be my motion is to go forward with this permit because I, I agree we need to get moving so these people can enjoy the area. And I would, um, maybe we need to do it in stages, Jack. I, I think it's tough to do everything. It's going to take us forever to get all that done. And to get the agreements with all the people pitching in. Um, I think it's doable, but I think it's going to take a long time, and, and I would rather not wait. But I would like to see us do um, you know, st step two, step three, and, and step two would be to extend that purple channel down. And actually, when I look at the map here, I'm going to ask Commissioner Wells, um, I, look at the, I look at the bridge over 19, and I see a huge sandbar to the right of the bridge. Is it blocked? There coming out of the Cody River? No, it's deep. There, it's deep access. There. Okay, you heard the mayor say that. I mean, as far as the canal, getting from there to, you know, the, the boat ramp is good on that side. The other, the other side's the issue, and, and he's correct. Folks getting out of Miller's Bayou, um, the access there's folks that might want to have a bigger boat that live in Miller's Bayou that have the same issue of getting out of that bayou. 
So Ms. what do you, Jim? Uh, Commissioner Wells, what do you think of, uh, so, of that yeah. idea? Yes. Yeah. So okay. let me stop real quick, because Commissioner Starkey, was that a motion you made, or did you just state I that? I will make that a motion. I will make that a motion. You have a motion. So I have two motions on the floor. But the motion now, so never a got a second that's on the floor. I did not, I know, but I still have two motions on the floor. <laughs> so now I have a motion by Commissioner Starkey. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. Commissioner Mariano, I'd like to have a little bit more discussion. I want to touch on the subjects that just have come up since the mayor had just spoken. When we were in the meeting, and I've been in other meetings as well, talking about that sandbar, it's not the first time the conversation has come up. And as Mr. Ballas just said, it is a separate permit to go out and do it. Part of the reason they wanted to rush this project through and get it done so they get it done quicker, not to take the time to go get the matching money from DEP or SWIFT money that could have happened, but they wanted to get the project done quicker. That's what we were told. And I've been told that several times, not just once. So as far as to try to get done quicker, it's not going to get it done quicker if you include that anyway. And if you don't include that, shame on you. Secondly, the reason this project got held up, and Commissioner Oakley, it's, it's important to mind, I, I don't blame the city that it got held up, but it got held up because they had to go change the scope of the project because of Waterfront Park. Because when they finally did their work on it, they found out you know, they couldn't close Nick Park to make it a parking lot. They had to keep it a boat ramp there. They had the waterfront park, they had the issue over there too. So because of that, they changed scope. So it's not that they did something wrong. They were trying to do, I think, something good at the time to go change all that. Because they could put more parking over there, would have been better. But because of deed restrictions, et cetera, they were put in that si situation where they had to resubmit. Now, the fault would come in, in my opinion, when they did submit, Curtis Franklin recommended do not change the scope the way you're changing it because it's going to affect how Treasury approves it. Treasury looked at it and Treasury denied it. So amongst our staff recommendation, they applied for it anyway because this is what they wanted to go do. Now you saw on the chart that Curtis has now got to submit through it, it checks one box out of 10. It would score very low. This would be at the bottom of the list that we just saw up there. It wouldn't score at all. Now, if we're going to do this, let's do it right. Let's go take the time. We had someone that was, I don't know if you remember Kings Bay, they did the presentation for us. They did everything up in Kings Bay. They came in, did a presentation with sand and shore. The, the environmental people come in. They come down and they looked at these channels. They thought they could put really good seagrass in there. They talked about eelgrass that they used up in Kings Bay. They were going to use that eelgrass here to really help the water quality, which they thought would work in that whole area. They said that DMA site, just like Chuck Puccini told these guys a year and a half ago, you could do a lot better with the cost involved. These guys think that if you just take that DMA site, you combine it with other dirt, cleaner dirt, you take the toxicity level down, now you can do all sorts of other things with it. I don't think it's going to be that much different when you start at Orange Lake, the runoff that's there. I mean, think about Orange Lake. Where's that runoff coming from? Cars, traffic, silt, et cetera. All those years, it was all pumped right into there. I don't think Orange Lake would be any different than that, and I think you'd use that for a base. And if Guild Dogs can then use that for a base, guess what? You've now taken to help redevelopment go. Now that property becomes even more valuable where you can go do something with it. If we take our time and do this right, if they listen to us, if they come to the table with DEP, we can make this an awesome project. But what we're doing right now... How do we now, make them do that, Jack? I don't know how you make another... Well, here's what you do, say. Do if you don't want. come to the table, we're not going to sign up because we don't want the risk of being shut down by Treasury saying, because you didn't do the project the way it was, because this thing would have scored only 10 points out of 30 compared to the others, and you didn't go before the... the uh, the Restore Act Committee, to let them see the new revised project, they could pull the money away and then we're at risk. I mean, we've got a lot of cards here to hold. And I'm going to tell you, think about this. We talk about the boating public. I don't know why he's not thinking about the people living live in the canals. Those canals are high, high paying. Now, Commissioner Moore, we talked about the CRA. Yeah. One of the things we talked about on this project we were having a discussion with, when we dredge these canals and these waterfront homes, those property values go up. And they told me, Vince Lupo told, said it, I want to get us off the CRA. You want to help the city get off the CRA? Go dredge those canals with the water from homes. Property values go up, water qualities go up, and you may be able to get them off that CRA, which is better for the citizens of all of Pasco County, not just Port Ritchie. It improves everything out there. This is the, the way that we get this project set up is terrible because, as the city tells you, they don't have money. Funds are limited. Well, this limiting of funds is not going to let them go do anything else. 
So we've got to look at this as a one-time, one-shot project. This money is going to be expended, and you're going to get all, all, all you're going to get for it is what in front of you. I will tell you, from talking to staff, SWIFT, my DEP, we can do so much better. And if we're going to go spend this money with the way the BP money was supposed to be spent, we should do it the right way. Um, and keep this in mind. In talking about leveraging funds, never mind just even SWIFT mud, there's residents on those canals that are willing to pay. Gill Dogs is willing to pay. And I think if somebody has catches or Whiskey Joes, they'd be willing to pay to help get more of this dredging stuff done. And it would be good for everybody in there. It would help the city, who's had major issues with many, many different things, come out of this here and get the right thing done. So I don't, I don't know how to end this stalemate between your idea and their idea. I mean, what? what it's just like this circle, and nothing never gets done. So I, so I got to ask Monty, my professional engineer standing in front of me what your thoughts are. So the RAC. Oh, that's fine. Sorry, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, go ahead. But we, I have still. I'm going to stop for one second. Still, we have. I have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Mariano with no second. I have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Starkey with no second. Go ahead and answer her question, but if we don't have any seconds in the second here, we're going to have to. Uh... Mr. Chair, if I may, the commissioner withdrew his in, effort, in an effort to get discussion. So I think yeah, really I, you I gotta, you're going to you're going to have to start time. over with a new motion once this discussion is finished. Let me try okay, another. Let you. me try another motion if I could. But, well, let's but there's a question on the floor. <laughs> I have a question on the floor by Commissioner Starkey to Mike Carballo. We have to move on with that. Thank you. We'll yes. Go back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the the RAC is an advisory committee to the Board of County Commissioners. It, it had a process that it went through to make certain recommendations to the board. The 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 result of that was a multi-year implementation plan, which was submitted to Treasury. When the revised <laughs> project was resubmitted to Treasury, it was rejected because it did not match the multi-year implementation plan. It is my understanding that the revised multi-year implementation plan and the new project, provided the project meets restore criteria, which staff believes it does meet the infrastructure um, component of the restore of the, of the restore criteria, that that would then set the project forward in motion under, under Treasury. Uh, so how that project racks and stacks amongst the other projects is, is really the purview of the board. Well, I think, you know, I'm an alternate to the RAC, but I do believe that we had consensus there that Miller's Bayou and the Port Ritchie waterfront is very important to the whole county. And it's very important to the 19 corridor for economic development. So I think I, I'm going to probably um, just go ahead and second Commissioner Oakley's motion, but emphatically say that I believe we need to continue to look at solutions to get more um, dredging done in that in that area. And maybe it's with Swift Mud, maybe it's with our legislature, but just like we all are getting behind the Cody River uh, bike trail, um, I think we all need to have a big plan for improving that, that area. And I want to see Port Ritchie deal with their CRA money correctly. Um, and that's part of that discussion too. So I guess I'm seconding Commissioner Oakley's motion to move there forward. Is no, there is no motion. I, didn't oh, yeah, I thought he made a motion. Look, I'll make the motion no. for to approve staff's recommendation. Huh? You already made a motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Starkey to approve. I have a motion by Commissioner Starkey. Do I have a second or not? What is her motion? Her motion is to approve staff's recommendation. I second that motion. Ron Oakley. Further discussion, please. I have a motion by Commissioner Starkey. I have a motion, a second by Commissioner Oakley. Further discussion by Commissioner Mariano on the motion. All right. Commissioner Oakley and Commissioner Starkey, as far as the motion goes with st staff, if you push this through this way, you're not getting the sandbar done, which is critical. And I'm going to tell you the information that I was told in a meeting, several meetings, that the sandbar is not part of the scope. So that doesn't get done. Providing that happens, um, it's a lot. The other thing that is going on is there's residents out there willing to contribute to possibly be able to fund that part of it or even the Gill Dog Channel. The, se the, se the second part is the businesses may be willing to contribute. The other thing is with the water quality on the Gill Dog Channel, you can go take other money to go fund the boat ramp. Why would you go take Restirect money to go fund that? 
You get a separate funding source. I mean, you, you can do so much better with what you've got. And I will tell you, the DMA site, you can have an expert down here, look at the soils from the test that's already done, and find out what can be done, can those soils be mixed, and can it be used to use that DMA site at Eric Soyanas. And you might be able to get, instead of two channels, you could get seven. You could get this looked at within 60 days and bring it, bring it back to us. That would be a much better motion to get something done without delaying. 60 days isn't going to hurt anything, but you may get seven channels instead of two and get the sandbar done. Um, sir, Oakley, I see your hand up, sir. Yes, sir. I, um, my second, I, I approve uh, uh, Commissioner Starkey's motion, but I think this gets it started. I think it goes to where we want it to go. We want to get started, get these done. Are there more things we need to do, like the sandbar and there's some other canals and all? I agree, there are. And I think as, as a commission, we need to be looking at the rest of this whole picture of that coast and make it better for our citizens on the West Coast. But let's get started and then come up with a plan of funding and all for doing all these others, because there's a lot there that it can be done and needs to be done. So. I stick with my second with uh, Commissioner Starkey's motion. Well, motion by Commissioner Starkey. I have a second by Commissioner Oakley. I see Commissioner Wells has his hands up for discussion. Just, just so I'm clear, and, and I, there's three phases to this. This is phase one. There's going to be a phase two. Could they add in the, the, the sand as part of that permit for phase two? Yes. Um, and I, I assume that's the plan. And I agree with Commissioner Mariano on the other canals. It'd be nice to get them done, but we've got to get something done. Um, we've been working on this well, since I've been a, since I've been a board member. So. That's, that's just one okay, there is three phases. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, may hey, I hey, respond to Commissioner Wells? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, I see Commissioner Wells and I see Commissioner Starkey. If we're going to keep, are we going to keep going back and forth after a second, or we somebody got to call the question? No, I just want to confirm that there is, and, and I agree with the motion on the floor, but I just want to make sure that, that the board understands there is three phases to this project. This isn't the only phase, and we're done forever. Um, just. So the city of Port Ritchie has outlined a, a three-phase plan. That is that is correct. As far as timelines and funding go, those those remain unknowns. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? No, I had my hand up. So Commissioner Kucky had her hand up first. Go I, ahead, Commissioner. I just want to say if in phase two, Jack, we can take a lot of your ideas um, and maybe do phase two cheaper, like take those spoils and put it on that, that was it Arbor Court? Um, and work with Swift Mud. Let's work on that with Phase Two. But let's go ahead and get get going with Phase One. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mariana. Yeah. So the key thing to mind is, in the agenda item we've got, I'm going to read it again. Other items from the initial scope that was submitted and approved by the U.S. Department and Treasury will not be completed. They're giving up on the rest of it. They've said it publicly that they're not going to do Phase Two and Three. You're looking at just getting Phase One done. Can we hear from That's them on the record? Hang on. Hang on. He's already told you that the sandbar could be permitted. In the meeting, he said it couldn't be permitted. It wouldn't be permitted by his own staff. But when you look at that, you've got to remember, you're getting just this done. If you go through with this, they have no money to go spend anything on. You're going to lose out the chance to get matching funds from Swift Mud, from citizens and businesses that will all benefit and want to see this happen with the redevelopment of the city, which is what this is supposed to do, and get water quality. What you're doing right now, you're taking away all that chances because there's no phase two, two and three coming from what they've got planned. Mr. Tremblay? I don't... Mr. I, I, have, I, have a, I have a second on the floor. So, I mean, if you're going to pull your second... No, I'm not. Then, <laughs> then if not, we need to call, call the vote. I'm calling the vote. I have a question based on what I just heard. Me too. <laughs> okay. Do you want to remove? Does somebody want to pull their motion? I mean, or no? We want I, confirmation. I want this, is what I just heard. A, this, this is a lot of discussion for having a second on the floor. It's not normal. I understand, okay. but I think it's a very important decision we got to make too. So well, I agree. That I don't know why we I, have se seconds, motions and seconds. What I understand from what they just said, they're going to do phase one. Why are we looking at an agenda item? that we we know or somebody knows that they're only going to do phase one and they're not going to try to do two or three why why are we looking at it like this if that is the case i don't understand we're not just voting on phase one we're voting for them to go through with phase two and three that was my concern 
Thanks, Mr. I'll answer that, please. So, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I believe I have Curtis Franklin on the line from, uh, from Parks, who, who has a deep history. I'd like to call on, on Mr. Franklin to speak to the phases that are approved, and then if, if, the, if it's the board's pleasure to probably hear from the city of Port Ritchie if they're still on the line. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Franklin. Yes, sir. Curtis Franklin from Parks, Rec, and Natural Resources. I just wanted to point out that only phase one was vetted and approved by the Board of County Commissioners. Only phase one went through the Restore Act Advisory Committee. So if we were to approach a phase two or a Mr. phase Mr. three, Chairman, that would happen. Can we hold on until Commissioner Wells comes back in? Can we, Curtis, can, can we hang on until <laughs> Commissioner Wells comes back in? He just walked out. This is too big. Okay, I can hold on for a sec. Can I make a comment while he's out? Please go ahead. Um, Jack, just because this is the only phase with the restore money doesn't mean that we won't find another way to move forward with other funds. Because um, dredging has occurred before, before there was restore. So I think this dredge is important to everybody. And if the community comes together with the county, we can find, we'll look for solutions to keep on dredging. That's my thought. Well, but I want to hear from the city if they're going to work towards other to continue to find solutions to dredge more of their waterfront. Mr. Chairman? Please go ahead. If, if you looked at the dredging numbers that were quoted from Divecom and the other company, those numbers aren't far off the one agenda item we got in front of us right now. Streetscaping can be done anytime. We could probably incorporate that into the MPO thing make that work. Uh, you might even use EDC money if you, cho if you chose to, as we talked about before, trying to make that waterfront un you know, underpass work. The boat ramp money, you don't need to put that in here. When you dredge all those projects in one shot, you get one mobilization, you got one dewatering, and if Eric's got his whole project right there, he could put all the soils right there, providing they test out, which Eric thinks they will, and, and Divecom thinks they will. You save all that money, and you get seven channels instead of two. And you can get them just done just as quick because I will tell you when you get to go permit that sandbar, that's going to take some time. I'll wait for about 10 or 15 more seconds and we're moving on. Let's hear the city talk about how they're going to uh, do phase two and three. Well, where's where the money coming from? Are they on the phone? If you want Guys, guys, I'm controlling the meeting. So we will wait for a few more seconds for see if Mr. Franklin comes. If not, we'll move on to the Mr. Franklin, then the city. Can you hear me? Not, not yet, sir. Just give me a few more seconds. All right. He's back. He's back. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Franklin. And then we'll move to the city, and then we'll either take your, pull your motion, or I'm calling a vote. I just wanted to point out, Commissioner, that only phase one was vetted for the Restore Act Advisory Committee, only if that phase went through the process. So if we move to phase two or phase three, those would have to go through the process of going in front of the RAC and then further on going and get approved by the Board of County Commissioners. Mr. Chairman? I need that. Yes, Mr. Commissioner Mariano. I disagree with that statement. Curtis, when, when the staff looked at the present, when the RAC looked at this whole presentation was all the parts together. Matter of fact, the very first presentation the city gave, they talked about the water quality. I told them to go back with the proposal, go think about it, try to come back bigger. They came back, back with all three phases. The biggest thing that got all the attention, and I listened to the tape, the biggest attention, matter of fact, the whole slideshow that's right in here has got all three. That's what we approved. That's what the schools were based upon, not just this phase one. I contest that we did not have this in front of the rack to look at just this phase one, especially was right here because this MYP had to be pulled back when they changed the scope. The rack has not seen this yet. And even the chart that you've got in there shows that they just have one out of nine, out of the 10 criteria that it's met. So I, I contest that statement. You want to discuss that further? Commissioner. Uh, sorry. Commissioner, um, when, when the, Rack, or when it was brought to the Board of County Commissioners, only phase one was submitted under the multi-year implementation plan. So when you look at the multi-year implementation plan, it only accounts for those particular parts of that plan. The other phase two and phase three, the Finger Canals going around, 
was not part of that plan. It was not per, uh, under, it's not set to the Treasury or part of that project. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. All right, so this proposal that's in front of us is just to the Commission. It hasn't been in front of the RAC, correct? I'm, I'm not really sure I understand your question. The, the whole I'm, presentation I'm, was made. The whole presentation was made to the Restore Act Advisory Committee, but there was only phase one moved forward with going through the multi-year implementation plan and being sent to Treasury. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. So the RAC has not heard just this one phase. They were presented with all the phases. The Commission has just looked at this one phase as approving whether, whether it goes forward. The scoring that was done by the RAC showed categories, all 10 categories scored points where they scored very high. When we looked at your chart, I took your chart, extrapolated from where you said the, they would qualify for points, there was only one category, and I gave them the bonus for timing to be, to be a five, so it would be perfect. They scored at the very bottom of the list. The RAC has not seen this one presentation, and I asked the Board, Mr. Chairman, I'll bring it to again, again. I think this should go back before the RAC and let, let the RAC look at it. Because right now you're just making a decision if this can fit into a, a Treasury's decision. And I will tell you, I, th I still think because of the way this is presented, the way this hasn't been in front of the RAC, we could be at risk of that whole 667. Treasury said, you know what? You made it sound like you went to the RAC and you didn't. We don't think you've done the water quality. We can go pull the money back, and now we're on the hook for 667 grand that you've, you've allocated, which the Iraq did not get to see. Okay. I, Mr. Franklin, do you have anything else to respond to? If not, I have the city on the line, and they can speak about the timing of phase two and three. That was another question I think Commissioner Mariano or Commissioner both, Starkey both had. No, sir, I have nothing else to add. I'm going to go ahead and go with Mayor Tremblay. Can you speak to phase two and three? And again, folks, I want to remind the commissioners that I have a second on the floor. So after this, and I saw Commissioner Oakley's hand up, either withdraw your motions, restate a motion, or somebody call the question. Okay? One of those three things have to happen after Commissioner Oakley gets. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor okay. Tremblay. Well, I'm going to withdraw my second on the motion that Ms. Starkey made. And uh, with that... I don't know what the motion should read, but I think we should step back and, and look at it further, like Mr. Mariano suggested to begin with. I'll let him make the motion. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I, I, I called on the mayor to speak, and then I was going to go to you. Okay. So let me go back to the mayor to All speak right. on page two and three, since that question was asked by Commissioner Mariano and Commissioner Starkey. Go ahead. If I may, thank you. First of all, I wanted to say um, everything that uh, Mr. Franklin said is, is accurate from what I understand historically. Um, what I can say is the city has never withdrawn its uh, request to move forward with phase two and three. Um, and obviously phase one has to happen before we can get to phase two and three. As soon as phase one is complete, which is this initial dredge, which has a, a great benefit, um, it's my intent to go back to our council to readdress two and three. Um, but I can tell you we've never withdrawn our request through the RAC to, to continue on with phase two and three. Okay, thank you, Mayor Tremblay. Um, now, I'm going back to you again, Commissioner Oakley. You're stating that you want to withdraw your second now. Yes, I will withdraw my second. So I have a, still have a, well, so there's no second to Commissioner Starkey's motion. I'll second Commissioner this, Starkey's motion, knowing that there is a phase two and phase three. And after having Curtis and the mayor explain things, I am comfortable with Commissioner Starkey's motion. Read her motion. motion. By Starkey. I have a second by um, Commissioner Wells. Madam Clerk, call roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. No. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Nay. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 3 to 2. Ooh. Please get to work on phase 2. <laughs> That is it for the regular agenda items. We're going to move on to miscellaneous business. Commissioner. Sorry, sorry, Commissioner. Well, there's the addendum AR1, and I got Eric Breitenbach on the line to talk to that one. I'm sorry, I did miss that. I apologize. I thought, yes, you're correct. AR, AR2 was attached to um, R2, 
So let's right. go ahead and move to AR. I apologize. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. This is Eric Bright, Black, Assistant County Administrator for Internal Services. Item AR1 is uh, presenting for your consideration a, a CARE Small Business Personal Protective Equipment Reimbursement Program that is to be funded by the Coronavirus Relief Fund. This program is capped to be at, a, at $1 million and is to provide direct assistance to small business owners who provided PPE for their employees due to COVID-19. Achieved by authorizing reimbursement to small businesses of up to $1 per business on a first come, first serve basis through an online application. The requirements we've set out for small businesses to qualify are they have to be a for profit, privately held small business in Pasco County that was established prior to March 1, 2020, and they must employ between 20 and 50 employees with the majority residing in Pasco County. The PPE purchases made by the small business must have been made on or after March 1, 2020 and before December 30, 2020. Uh, eligible PPE includes things like face masks, gloves, shield, face shields, gowns, hand sanitizers, and disinfectants that are effective against COVID-19. The county will have an online portal set up for applications to be submitted. It will be posted on the county's website and pending your approval, uh, open to receive requests for reimbursement beginning this Thursday, May 21st at 0900. Uh, and with that, I standing by for questions and respectfully request approval of this program. Right. Thank you, Mr. Brighton Boston. Obviously, this is I think, a good person. I think this is a great program. We want to obviously continue to support our small businesses across Pasco County and obviously need that for the health and well-being of citizens. So very much appreciated bringing this to us. Do you have any questions or comments from the board? I concur, no, with your, uh, I concur with your comments, Chairman. It's a great program. I'm, that's the intent of this money is to get it out, help our small businesses and get the money into our uh, economy. With that, I uh, make the motion to approve AR1. Thank you, Commissioner Starkey. I have a motion by Commissioner Starkey. Do I have a second? Second. Ron, a second. I think I'll have a second by Commissioner Mariano first, if I'm not correct. That's okay. <laughs> I heard you first. You you second by Commissioner Mariano. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you all. All right. Now we'll move on to miscellaneous business, and I'll start with um, Commissioner Oakley, District 1. Floor is yours. Old business? We're ready? Yes, sir. Um, I, I have forwarded to you, uh, Chairman Moore, a capital credit refund check on, from Withlacoochee River Electric. They did this actually uh, two months early, and so they uh, estimated what it would be, and then our check from them is $319,642 to Pasco County and then they sent a check also to me to go to Tampa Bay Water for $97,067.14. So uh, it's great that they help us and it's needed during this COVID-19 issues and the cost that's going on, but that helps um, give us credits toward our electric bills that we received from with Future Electric. So uh, second item, uh, this coming Saturday, uh, May 23rd is the 100th birthday of Stanley Burnside. Um, they're having a uh, drive-by at meeting at the Presbyterian Church on East Side at a lot, and we'll have a drive-by around 10:15 on this Saturday. That is his birthday. Mr. Burnside served as clerk of the Circuit Court for seven consecutive four-year terms. And for that, we're, we're very grateful for that. So also I will uh, have next time a, a resolution on June 2nd for, for him in which I would like, uh, it can be in consent, but I'd also like it to be read in, into record at, before the board. And that's yes, all sir. I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, Commissioner Starkey, please. Um, yes, um, I am. I've uh, texted my assistant, Danny, to see if he can come back with me on the total amount of meals we've served so far as part of the uh, FLAG 2020 Pasco. 
Um, but I can tell you uh, we've hit every hospital now. And uh, today at lunchtime, Commissioner Mariano and I, and is your daughter joining us? I think Amber's going to going to join us as well, okay. yes. Okay. Representative Mariano uh, will be delivering um, 50 lunches to Bay Care, uh, the North Bay Hospital. And I was on the phone with them this morning. They're very much looking forward to our donation. Thank you very much. And I think um, Greg, who else is involved in that? Uh, Greg Armstrong from Colwell Banker and Jeremy Harding from, Col from uh, Barry Harding Insurance and Commissioner Wells, who works at Colwell Banker as well as he may, we may be able to make it, who's going to try to adjust his calendar too. Excellent. Excellent. So we'll be going there at lunchtime. Um, and, and Megan Harding from the school board. Maybe and, and maybe Megan Harden, school board member. So a big showing today, um, and, and thanks to our frontline workers. Uh, this week I also um, delivered to um, the Bay Care um, drive through at Gulf High School. And while I was there, there were a lot of people driving through. So, uh, And that was on the recommendation of Mike Napier. He uh, recommended them. They're doing such a great job, and they're, they're out there on the front line. So thank you very much. Um, driving back from Orlando or Kissimmee um, this weekend, it's the first time I've been out of the county, I think in two months, it's a very weird feeling. Um, I came back along State Road 56, and it has that wonderful trail, Commissioner Moore and Commissioner Oakley. I'm not sure whose district Two Rivers Ranch is and all that property. Is that yours, Commissioner Moore? It's both. I, it's, I think it blends with both of us Okay, so. Somehow. Um, it's a big property. <laughs> yeah, and it's a nice trail, um, and it goes all the way to Bruceby Downs when you get onto Wiregrass Boulevard over there, I believe. Um, but it really lacks any amenities, any signage, any benches. There's nothing there. So I would love for one of you two guys, to, uh, or both of you, to kind of um, take it into consideration that we could take um, trees from 4G Ranch. We could take um, some money from our landscaping fund. Um, we could have Boy Scouts build some little shelters along there. We could amenitize that trail. I didn't see anybody on it, and I'd really um, like that to be a well-used amenity out there. So just just a thought for you guys. And um, that Thank is you for it. that. Huh? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, that's it for okay. me. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Wells. Um, Dan, are you going to bring up, I wanted to bring up about, you know, that I'm on the United Way board with Kathy and some things that they've done as far as helping those in need as well as the, the AAA with the federal dollars helping support restaurants to help feed folks in Pasco. I was going to go over the numbers, but if you're going to, I don't want to take... Okay. Well, we can just wait for yours. I, do, I think it's important for the board to see the numbers. Absolutely. You know, we... it's. It's, it's neat how we're able to support local restaurants and pay them $10 a meal, and it's been a huge success. I just think it's, I just wanted to highlight that. Um, and just, what I'd also like to highlight real quick, the great job that staff and the EDC has done. I know that Bill's team has been inundated, working hard to get these checks to everybody, and I know everybody that I've spoke to has already received their check. As far as small business-wise, very grateful. Obviously, I wish we could help everyone. I understand the funds are limited, but with that $7 million, we were able to help so many. So I just wanted to commend everybody on that again. So thank you, and that's it. Thank you, Commissioner Wells. Commissioner Mariano. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And maybe under Dan's presentation, we'll be able to talk about do we have enough uh, masks for hurricanes, if we have shelters we're going to have to have, the spacing we're going to go do, uh, we're going to have the testing. I know we asked a question at the Monday, Monday afternoon meeting, you know, what's the story as far as the testing masks, so, I mean, testing kits not for the antibodies, but for the disease, disease itself, so we know how to treat people when they do come in, so hopefully that will be in the presentation. Um, I hope that um, as we look at the uh, stormwater project with Magnolia Valley with the outfall, um, glad Mr. Carbell is still here, that we do look closely at the boring test to find out what soils are good, which aren't. Um, talking to Mr. Miles, he talked about doing another district park in the District 4 area or somewhere around there from Magnolia Valley. I think it may be time to go look at if those soils are good. We could maybe look, take a look at uh, another look at taking Mitchell Park and possibly raising that up about three feet so any time a rain comes, those softball fields get wiped right out. Maybe it could be put, a, put just a soccer complex there and maybe at Magnolia Valley where it's high and dry to go look at uh, just another maybe a fiveplex or fourplex of softball which could be better served in, in an area which would, could work out well. Um, I think there's good, a good number of opportunities for that soil that's out there as well. 
Uh, we are working on Leisure Lane, uh, the Habitat Town and Country Villas project. Habitat, you know, as, as I, we all saw the email, I think that they're tired of losing money. I think looking at the construction, I had actually a professional go out there look at a townhome project that he could possibly build out there. We, he's working with Don Rosenthal right now as far as can they bring fill in, could they bring fill in, could they build a better product that would actually sell for more money to, to go. So as we go look at trying to get the state expenditures for $1.5 million for the septic to sewer conversion, it may be an opportunity to go, kind of look if we can modify that fill setup that it may help. And, and Mike, if you could, how are we doing as far as cleaning out that pond in the back? that we found that we thought we didn't think was ours, but now that we know it's ours. Is that, is that coming on the radar pretty quick? Mike Carvala, I'll have to get back to you on that, but Public Works is aware, and uh, I'll get your work order and, and what they're, the, the information on what they're doing about that pond. Okay. Can I ask him a question based on something that you're just saying? Sure. Do we still own that property out there in Hudson that we bought years ago for a utilities? Um, Yes, yes, and actually we are in the middle of, of looking at designing a, a permanent public works administration and west side maintenance facility on that property. I wonder if there's any extra dirt on there that we could permit our own pond and bring some dirt down and put it on leisure? Because it's high up there, so it's a thought. We can certainly give, give consideration to whatever the board desires on that. You know, if we have any property where we can get some dirt and fill leisure lane, that would be great. Um, and with just one last thought, Mike, when you're talking with uh, the city about the, the dredging or the project that was just approved, the aquatic preserve legislation that just got passed may make it difficult to work that channel. Uh, though actually, no, skip that because it won't matter because because of any aquatic preserve money, if it's approved with restrict money, we're actually okay. So we're not affected by that. But it'd be good for the board to know about the sandbar anyway. Yes, we'll, we'll report you. back. Oh, I have a resolution. Yeah, you have a couple of walk-ons too. Walk yeah, I got two, walk yeah, two walk-in resolutions. We'd read them by title. There's a couple of uh, veterans that we have. Hey, hey, um, Thank you. What do you see? A motion. I need to um, make make a motion, sir, to hear the emergency. Move, move here the emergency. Second, Commissioner Starkey. I have a motion. Here. I have a motion by Commissioner Mariano to hear the emergency. Do, uh, Mr. Steinsner, do I need I need one for each resolution? I think, sir. No, you can you can have one emergency for the two resolutions. That's fine. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, so I have a motion by Commissioner Mariano to hear um, the move the emergency to hear two resolutions. Second by Commissioner Starkey. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Floor is yours, Commissioner Mariano. Uh, read by title. Uh, the first resolution is resolution number 20-163, resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, recognizing Frank Kojar for his service to the county or to the country in the United States Army from October 1st, 1950 to October 15th, 1952. Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Mariana, a second by Commissioner Starkey. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Commissioner Mariano, your second one, sir. Uh, by title only, please. Resolution number 20-162, a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, recognizing Fritz Kozar for his services in the armed service, I'm sorry, in, for his services in the armed forces of the United States from May 1943 to January 1948. I'll move approval of the World War II veteran. Yeah, very cool. I will second that. I have, I have a motion by Commissioner Mariana, a second by Commissioner Starkey. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. All right, motion passes by zero. Thank you so much. Anything else, sir? No, sir. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Biles. Yes, sir. Before I turn it over to Kathy, um, the question about main sale, I actually got the answer from three different people while we were sitting here. Uh, they have their permits and are scheduled to great break ground in June. So just wanted to give you all the answer to that before we broke. And now I will turn it over to Kathy. Can I go over some of the 
items that uh, Commissioner Wells mentioned and some other things we're doing. So go away. Take it away, Kathy. Can everybody hear me? Because I can unmute. Somebody can you fine. Thank you. You can hear me? Okay, great. Thank you. Kathy Pearson, Assistant County Administrator, Public Service. Give the board an update on some of the programs. Next slide. Somebody change that slide, please. Thank you. Programs, KIOS program. This is the rental income rental and mortgage assistance that we uh, launched on the 7th with uh, 1,046 applications. Um, and I, I'm going to put everything hold for a second. Um, sure can. Ms. Pearson, hold for one second. You are now breaking up and we lost you. Okay, you're back again. Uh, you are on stagnant, I guess is the word to be used for it. Uh, yeah, you're, no. You're, it's a, you're having connections. It's, it's, it's a network network issue, on, probably on her end. Yeah. Um, if you want, Commissioner, yes, I, can, um, I, can, I can fly through these well, pretty quickly if you want. Um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Ms. Pearson. No, that's, that's okay. Just uh, as, as you can see from the slide, I'm not going to read all the numbers, but we are working through the applications on the CARES program. The, the interesting one is at the bottom where the average disbursement is about almost $2,200 a person as we work through these, and it's working great between the various teams to include the clerk staff helping us out getting through that. Uh, can you go to the next one? So Operation Feed Pasco, this is a partnership with the United Way uh, and started a couple weeks ago and we're serving about 3,000 meals a week uh, through that. It, again, this is, as Commissioner Wells mentioned, this is the one using restaurants and caterers to help serve uh, those that need the food. So thanks, go ahead. Uh, a little more stats on that. Um, the dining out at home, again, more of a seniors program. Uh, we're serving about 88 a day and we're serving about almost 200 seniors through that program. It started near the end of April. The senior meals drive-through uh, started middle of March and uh, we're serving about 240, almost 250 seniors through that. Uh, and we've shrunk, taken about 100 off the wait list and are continuing to try to trim that wait list down uh, through the CARES money. So go on to the next one. Comfort station, uh, we mentioned this before, serving almost, uh, about 350 people out there serve about 271 lunches um, and this is out near uh, highway 19 and ridge road and go on and so uh, we mentioned summer camps i think i mentioned them yesterday we are still planning on moving forward with summer camps but about half the normal capacity due to social distancing and and just some of the facilities we're going to have to be using so online registration will begin on the 30th uh, again this is we're doing this assuming we will be getting to a phase two, which allows groups larger than 10. Uh, so that, that caveat is still there before these camps start. So, and I think that's the last slide and commissioner, that's all I have. Any questions for Mr. Biles? Um, we'll move uh, to um, Ms. I, I do real quick. Oh, um, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm really glad that we're doing this. And I've heard from uh, many people who are so grateful that we have this opportunity. Um, are we able to rotate around to different restaurants on that dine out and just help more of the restaurants? I know uh, with our program, we've done 560 meals and we've helped, we've, we ordered those meals from local restaurants in, in, uh, in the community. Just wondering if, if we're able to rotate those restaurants. So can you guys hear me? This is Kathy Pearson. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. So to answer that question for the dining out program, Commissioner Starkey, that is through our AAA and those restaurants have to be vetted. So all restaurants that are interested in that have to get vetted through our AAA. As far as the United Way, they are taking many applications and they have been using a lot of restaurants to serve. So they're not as stringent as our AAA is. So if someone's listening and they want to get involved, how do they um, contact you? Let me get you that email. You're talking about for the United Way. We gave that information at the last board meeting. You need to contact United Way, Madeline Colon, um, and I will get that information for you in one second. Okay.
Okay, while well, we're waiting for her to come back, let me go ahead and just move on to um, the county attorney's office. I don't have anything right now, Commissioner. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, while we're waiting, we'll go on to the. Well, there, there she's back. Go ahead. Okay, for the United Way, for for the dining out, you want to down dining out at home at aaapp.org. That's who you need to email. They will vet your restaurant. And for the United Way, you just need to call the United Way office. And let me give you that number. That's for Madeline Colon. One second on that. And that number is 727-845-3030. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, clerk and comptroller. Yes, hi. Um, I just wanted to say and commend both of our teams for the PASCO CARES money. Um, finances processing checks daily uh, on this. <laughs> and um, and I, I just want to say it's a great collaborative effort. We work very closely um, every day. If we have any concerns or questions, our team reaches out and we're able to resolve anything to get the matter processed, to get the checks out to um, our citizens and residents. So um, Manny Long is here, the Director of Finance. I just want to commend him and his team. They've been putting in a lot of hours on this as well as your team. So thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. All right, I have two items. I'll try to be quick. Um, tomorrow, myself and Representative Rainey Magger co-sponsoring a farm share distribution at the shops at Wiregrass Mall. It'll be Lot C, which is located next to J.C. Penney. Um, if anyone in the audience knows of anyone who could use a bag of fresh produce, um, please um, let them know. Again, it's tomorrow, 9 a.m at the shops at Wiregrass, Lot C, which is next to J.C. Penney. Um, again, this is in conjunction with Farm Chair, myself and Representative Maggard. Um, appreciate everybody's hard work on this. We have probably 40 to 50 volunteers that are also going to come and help people around the community. So I appreciate everybody in their participation. Again, um, anybody that needs that assistance, we, we're there for you. And um, we'll be distributing that food in, morning, in the morning at 9 a.m. Second one, and this will be, a, we'll need a little discussion on this from the board. Um, I wanted to bring this to you after having discussions um, with, um, TDC, sorry, the TDC, um, Adam Thomas, our um, DMO director for tourism, as well as our um, attorney for the um, TDC. So, Tourist Development Council is required by Florida statute to have two members from municipalities, one being the most populous city, which is the city of Newport Ritchie, that's the most populous, and one other municipality. Um, right now we have city of Newport Ritchie and the city of Dade City on there. Um, city of Dade City has been on there since 1991. Um, just in our conversations, we weren't sure why it's always been Dade City because Zephyr Hills is actually the second largest city in the county right now, um, Dade City being third. Um, now, I, just stating that, um, they, they've they expired. So we as a commission either have to um, again vote on reinstating Dade City as a city and they appoint their person, which has been Mayor Hernandez, and I will say this, Mayor Hernandez is very involved, does an excellent job on the, on the TDC Council. Um, again, she, her, she has, brings a lot to the table, a lot of great input, but after talking to the um, county attorney's office, I needed to bring this to your attention that um, it is this board's choice to either leave Dade City on or you have the option of bringing in another city if you like, okay? question is based on the floor for all of you. Um, would you like to continue to leave Dade City on the Tourist Development Council, or did you want to consider bringing in another city? Personally, it needs to stay on the east side of the county, so it'll either be Dade City or Zephyr Hills, because we already have one on the west side. Um, so I will listen to any input. Commissioner Oakley, I see your hands up. Yep. I, uh, 
I'd like to see us move that to the city of Zephyr Hills. And I thought I was told that the city of Zephyr Hills was the largest city in the county uh, not too long ago. But I don't know, I don't haven't seen any numbers, but they've been talking about that for this past year. That they're the biggest city in the county. Yeah, I. we looked at it the other day, or the numbers I was given, it was Newport Ritchie, but I'm not saying I'm correct on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I don't think you are, but it's my opinion. But <laughs> we need to look at it and see, but I really think uh, there's a lot of growth in Zephyr Hills, so. So here, how about we do this for a second? Um, and I hate to break some of them back, but unless Mr. Steinsnyder, you're in the in the room, or if anybody else in the room can look it up real quick and see and confirm that statistic that Newport Ritchie is the largest and Zephyr Hills the second largest. If you could take somebody in the and give me two seconds and look that up. Um, I'm not sure where you'd find the most current information except except census and. Um, and new and a uh, question on that: Are they full-time residents or part-time residents? Is that a, should we take that into consideration, Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Boss. Yeah, I looked up the cities. The latest census estimate, I believe, is 2018 on the cities. They've not done the 2019 estimates yet. And if I recall correctly, because I looked up Zephyr Hills last week for another issue. Port, Newport Ritchie just edges out Zephyr Hills in 2018, but that does not mean that it'll be the same in 2019. But that's that's what but, I recall from looking look at, at that last week. But if so we have to look at it, what it is. But if it's the board's desire to have the number one and number two city, one from east and west, that it whether they've edged them out or not, <laughs> it would seem that you you know that that. Newport Ritchie and Zephyr Hills are the are the top two cities and and they are representing both halves of the county. Right. Okay. So again, with that, you know, talking to Elizabeth Blair from the county attorney's office, this discussion needed to happen. You know, this board. Um, again, Camille does an amazing job. Um, so and we appreciate her. But again, this is the entire board's decision. So if. Mr. Oakley, you feel that Zephyr Hills should have a chance? You know, I'm, I'm waiting for everybody else's input. Now, does it uh, have to be the mayor, or can it be a council member, or, or no, it's whoever the, it's the city itself? I'm just, I'm just speaking for on. I'm just speaking that Mayor Hernandez has done a good job, and she's, you know, oh yeah, well, I understand that. I've yeah. been there. And I'll agree. Um, yeah, but um, it's the city, and then the city, Make I would appoint. It makes the appointment, which is typically the mayor makes the appointments for the city. So, um, well, I like to see Zephyr Hills. Zephyr Hills has grown a lot and they're a growing community. And I think their input is time to change and bring something new to the board and having Zephyr Hills be the representative. Mr. Chairman, Jack Mariano. Yes, Commissioner Mariotta. And, and I'll share the sentiments. I mean, Camille Jimenez, she does a great job, great person, very involved with it. She's familiar with both sides of the county as well, but I, I do think it's uh, <laughs> Commissioner Oakley making the recommendation. I'll back it up. Okay, so I have a motion by Commissioner Oakley and I have a second by Commissioner Mariano Discussion? to appoint the city. Uh, this, yep, let me just finish the motion. Uh, <laughs> second by Commissioner Mariano to appoint Zephyr Hills on the TDC. Now I have a discussion by Commissioner Starkey. Um, perhaps um, Camille could be uh, appointed as a, another kind of member to the board. Is that possible to the commission? Um, no, because there's by statute, there's, there, uh, Elizabeth's not here, um, but um, by statute, the membership has to be made up of a certain amount of hotels and a certain number of individual businesses that are in the tourism industry. I don't know, Mr. Steinsner, you can back that up or yeah, not, but. I, I don't know what your vacancies are right now, but she would have to qualify for a different okay. vacancy other than the other than the city appointment. Well, I, I agree. When I was, was chair of tourism, Camille was a very valuable member on the uh, council. and um, But I, I could see it's Zephyr Hill's turn now, so I'll, I support the motion. So I have a motion, again, by Commissioner Oakley. I have a second by Commissioner Mariano. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. 
Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye, motion passes 5-0. Um, Zephyr Hill is now on the TDC Council. And then um, I know the tourism team is listening in, um, along with um, Andy. Um, the two of you will need to work on drawing up a letter um, from myself to inviting Zephyr Hills. They'll need to make an appointment um, before the next TDC meeting. And with that, that is all I have. We will take break until 1.30. We'll see you then.